This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, I'm Sabrina Brown. Thank you for joining us. Topping the news tonight, some government offices on Grand Bahama remained closed today to facilitate a massive cleaning up. Work crews have been on the job for a couple of days now. It is an effort to address health concerns that emerged recently. The Minister for Grand Bahama got a first-hand view of those offices late yesterday. Italia Hall has the story. Several government offices housed at the National Insurance Complex are still out of commission. These offices have been closed for more than a week for maintenance cleaning. Minister for Grand Bahama Dr. Michael Darville toured the complex late Thursday afternoon to inspect the work being carried out. He says he is satisfied that work is progressing on schedule. I'd like to speak to the general public as it relates to the inconveniences that is happening here at the National Insurance Building. As you were aware, a couple weeks ago, the minister responsible for national insurance and labor, the Honorable Shane Gibson, was on Grand Bahama, where we were addressing some of the issues as it affects uh, uh, C.A. Smith Building, the national insurance building. Well, uh, the assessment was done, and it was quite obviously that we had some issues with the building. And what you're seeing here today is the whole process of mobile remediation. Dr. Darville says these government offices had to be closed to the general public due to the nature of the work. This level of cleaning, he notes, just cannot be done with staff and members of the public in the area. When you are actually doing the necessary cleaning to removal of mold, of course you can't have staff in the building. So as behind us, you will see that road traffic now, we're doing a lot of the repairs and some of the leaks that took place as a result of the blowers, the air-conditioned blowers. And we need to make sure that we stop those leaks so that we have no water leaks in the ceiling. Uh, the process is going extremely well and uh, behind us as well, uh, we finished with the Treasury, we finished with uh, the Public Service Building and now we are dealing with uh, the road traffic. Another agency, the National Insurance Board, was closed on Friday to facilitate maintenance crews. We cannot allow the staff as well as the individuals who come to National Insurance to be exposed to any of the hazardous chemicals that exist at the site. So by Monday uh, of next week, uh, we feel confident that the Department of Environmental Health, along with the public analysts, will review uh, the actual repairs that have taken place and to ensure that the buildings are safe for employees as well as uh, clients to go back into. The final stages of extensive cleaning will take place over the weekend. Dr. Darville says all government agencies at the National Insurance Complex should be up and running on Monday. It's Halia Hall, Sedanus Network News. The healthcare system in the country making history on Grand Bahama as the Nurses Association of the Bahamas celebrated the achievements of some of its own. A special graduation ceremony was held today at Le Chateau on the Grain. Joan Davis Roll reports. The historic moment coming as 50 nurses on Grand Bahama reached a pinnacle of their professional career. After one year of intense studies, they are now known not only as pace setters, but leaders in one of this country's most noble profession, nursing. Give you all the nurses here in the Bahamas, throughout the Bahamas, I, you cannot give you more thanks. I wish we could give you more money for what you do but that's above my pay scale <laughs> at the moment. Um, but let me begin by saying on behalf of the government of the Bahamas, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry for Grand Bahama, the executive management team of the Grand Bahama Health Services, and the people of the Bahamas. I wish to say, I wish to take this opportunity to thank all nurses for your invaluable contribution to the health care of the Bahamas and to the people of the Bahamas. Issuing a charge to the graduates of the internationally acclaimed Leadership for Change program was keynote speaker, Senator the Honorable Tanisha Tynes. Senator Tynes emphasized that this advanced training comes as Grand Bahama witnesses significant advancements in the health care sector. She noted that a revolution is taking place on this northern island with the introduction of stem cell research. This, she says, places nurses on the precipice of new professional horizons. Grand Bahama have been the recipients of the second largest and contemporary health legislation of the Stem Cell Act passed in Parliament in 2013. With the operation of a private neo-state-of-the-art hospital for cardiac stem cell surgeries, thereby opening new educational opportunities 
and education of healthcare professionals in the Bahamas. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bahamas now more than ever need strong nursing leaders who are critical thinkers and who will develop, implement, and evaluate innovative frameworks and strategies to address our health issues. So today, the future of nursing looks bright as evident by these 15 le nurse leaders who will be put, who will be a part of the trendsetters for nurses in the Bahamas. Senator Tynes commended the graduates for their determination and commitment to success. Joan Davis Roll, ZNS Network News. Three people taken to hospital this morning following a two-car collision at the intersection of West Mall Drive and Adventurers Way. The accident involved a government vehicle registered to the Ministry of Finance and a Toyota, Toyota Echo registered to All Build Hardware. Reports say the driver of the government vehicle, a police officer, sustained injuries to his leg and shoulder. The driver of the other vehicle and her passenger also sustained injuries. They were all taken to hospital for medical attention. This matter is being investigated. Meanwhile, an American woman taken into custody at the Lucayan Harbor yesterday and charged with disorderly conduct, use of obscene language, resisting arrest, and assault of a police officer. Catherine McLaughlin appeared before Magistrate Rankin Johnson and pled guilty to all charges. She was convicted and fined $675 or two months in prison. She was also charged with overstaying. She pled guilty to that charge as well. She was convicted on the charge and fined $3,000 or in default one year in prison. At last report, she was unable to pay the fine and was transported to prison to begin serving her time or until the fine is paid. She was ordered to be deported once the fine is paid or at the end of her custodial sentence. Michael Mikey Hepburn of Pinedale 8 Mile Rock arraigned in the Magistrate's Court in 8 Mile Rock today for breach of the Fisheries Act. Hepburn is accused of harvesting crawfish out of season. Reports say he was arrested on Wednesday in the area of Bayshore Road in West End and found in possession of a quantity of crawfish. Hepburn appeared before Magistrate Gwen Claude. He was given a fine of $1,500 or the alternative of nine months behind bars. Tonight, the Fisheries Department is warning the public to refrain from harvesting crawfish during the closed season as violators will feel the full brunt of the law. Stay with us, the Northern Edition is coming right back. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The youth of Grand Bahama getting the opportunity to become more environmentally conscious. Over the past five months, 26 students have been enrolled in the Save the Bays Youth Education Ambassador Program, learning about the importance of the environment and leadership skills. That group of students graduated from the program this week. Javan Hunt gave the charge during the ceremony at the Wallace Groves Auditorium. We take field trips. We bring stuff in for them to experience the island, experience what it is that they have to protect. We meet industry leaders and learn how they work with the environment in safe ways because these guys are going to be leaders. They're going to be working for or employing behemoths, so they have to know how to keep this environment safe and secure for, for future generations. We step outside of our comfort zones and we are open to change. And most importantly, we groom leaders. A parent involved in the program, photographer Jenny Russell, says it is making a positive difference in the lives of the youth. This program was not only about fun and field trips, it taught the children about leadership and how some decisions they make now will affect us all later on, whether it's good or bad. They know how to speak and how to have a voice in the community, um, in the community on behalf of the environment and how to be team players. With all the stories that I report on as a member of the media and um, about the environment, it's programs such as this one that will make a difference in helping to protect and preserve our environment and natural resources by teaching our children from an early age how important it is for their future. The event concluded with the graduates receiving certificates for all of their hard work. 
Eight high schools on Grand Bahama going head-to-head -head in PharmaCam's Battle of the Brains competition. The contest that promotes the development of careers in the sciences came down to a clash between Tabernacle Baptist Academy and Bishop Michael Eldon School. BMES walked away the winner. District Superintendent for West Grand Bahama Mary Cooper was among the many spectators and well-wishers on hand for the finals. She commended PharmaCam for the level of commitment shown to the youth of Grand Bahama. Not only have they been sponsoring this competition, but they have also been every year donating scholarships to two of our top students in the Grand Bahama District in the sum of $10,000. And they actually arranged for some of their scientists and technicians to work shoulder to shoulder with our students and teachers. Cooper also commending students and parents for their support of the science program. I also take this opportunity to thank our hard working students for the work they are doing, the very good work that they are doing here in the Grand Bahama District and giving our schools national recognition. We are proud of you students and to the parents and teachers who have helped to inspire these young scientists, thank you. What you are doing is paying huge dividends, not just for these students themselves, but for our country. The fifth annual Men United March is all systems go for this Whit Monday. Thousands of men, families and young people are expected to take part in the March and Family Fun Day. Principal and supporter Norris Bain congratulating organizer Dudley Sade on what he calls another meaningful event for the community. Bain is encouraging fathers to not only bring their kids but to also be an example to their families. The men, uh, we have a God-given responsibility to lead. Uh, we, we, um, uh, there's no better way to say it. God has given us that responsibility. Uh, if you check the scriptures from the beginning of time, uh, and so I want to call on men of our society, of our families, of our country is going to see a change. It's going to have to start with men taking their rightful responsibilities, responsibility in the home and being the fathers that they ought to be. Pastor and gospel performer Simeon Alton will be performing with his New Life Band. He's encouraging all community leaders to go out and enjoy a fun atmosphere. To the local pastors, he's issuing a challenge. We are going to interject a bishop's challenge in terms of who has the best vocal for singing. Oh. And say, uh, we are going to include that. So I'm looking forward for all of the bishops and reverends and pastors um, to join me on stage. Certainly, well, if our pastors would um, endorse this event, then those uh, um, that we shepherd would um, fall in line. Our ministers would fall in line, and then all of the men in the church would fall in line, their wives, their children, the entire community would fall in line. So it is important that our leaders um, sanction this event in their churches, in their civic groups, in the schools. A Glow International and the Grand Bahama Christian Council are coming together to host an island-wide prayer vigil. President of A Glow International Freeport Chapter, Attorney Constance McDonald says the organization is committed to working with the various churches. We believe that our nation is in need of a lot of healing and there are a lot of things going on in the nation that we need to pray about. And so as an aglow, um, we got together and we more or less decided all the different things that we needed to pray about. We know that you have a lot of prayer warriors out there and persons have been meeting, praying, and what we're doing now is we all come in together to pray. And you know, it's, the Bible says that when the prayers, when the prayers go up, the blessings come down and um, our regional director because she told us that okay the first prayer that we had was within the four walls this prayer must now be out in the open because what we want to do is we want to permeate the atmosphere 
Grand Bahama Christian Council President Pastor Peter Pinder says the council is delighted to take part in the prayer vigil as there are several prayer items on the 2015 agenda that connects with those of a glow. Prayer makes a significant difference in, in our society. I want to appeal to the wider Grand Bahama community. Uh, we have already sent out invitations to our churches but I want to extend a further invitation for people everywhere to join us in this effort to come together to pray. The Bible declares that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I believe that prayer would bring about a transformation in our society. The interdenominational prayer vigil is set to take place this Sunday, May 17th, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the Independence Park under the theme, Relationships. And now to our nightly feature, Ask the Doctor. Hi, I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and welcome to my final segment on lupus. Linda from Freeport asks, I was recently diagnosed with lupus. Can it be cured? Linda, thanks for your question. Unfortunately, there is no cure for lupus. However, Early diagnosis and proper medical treatment can significantly minimize symptoms, reduce inflammation and pain, help maintain normal function, and prevent lupus flare-ups or serious complications. Since lupus affects each person differently, treatments are usually tailored to the specific problems that arise in each person. Medications and dosages will also vary depending on the severity of the disease. In addition to medications, Doctors recommend that lupus patients take good care of themselves. Flare-ups may be less severe and less frequent if healthy lifestyle choices are made, such as using sunscreen that can block both UVA and UVB rays, regular exercise, becoming educated about lupus, not smoking, eating a healthy, well-balanced diet, and surrounding oneself with a support system of family, friends, and health professionals. If you or someone you know has lupus or symptoms of lupus, please see a doctor at one of our community clinics as soon as possible, because a delay in diagnosis and treatment can increase the risk of serious complications. Remember, it's important to follow up with your physician if you have any concerns about your health. After all, your health is in your hands. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Don't go away. Sports is up next with Ricardo Lightborn. Everybody and welcome to Sports and Ricardo Light Born, the Grand Bahama Little League Baseball Championships folks underway yesterday at the Mara Baseball Stadium. So let's take you between the lines. The Tigers Mo Ryan roll on the mound and watch the move with the first. It's called a good pickoff. The Playtime Sports International is having a major problem seeing the baseball. That's a K for Saunders. The fans in the stands for the championship week at the ballpark. The Pelican Bay Flyers having a snack after 12-0 Shellac and the Coca-Cola Lions in a minor league game one. Between the lines, the BAC Tigers on offense had to play the ground ball a second to 4-3 out. The Nationals pitcher then ran a control problems and lost track of the zone. The next pitch, that's way off the mark and some concerns in the Nationals dugout. That brought out the manager asking to be tossed. Give him his wish, Reggie. Send a brother to the parking lot. That then created a meeting of the umpires to control the game. Here we go. Now a meeting of the managers, umpires, and players. Okay, enough talk, guys. Let's play ball. Playtime pitch simply was not there. A walk. The next batter was given a free pass. 6-4, your score. The Tigers up in this one. The next batter is where the Tigers then found the space between second and third, and that's recorded as a base hit and the RBI. Then came this play. There you go. Go back. 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 Go some costly errors, Turan roll two for four, Robin Haven two for three. The BAC Tigers now leading this ball game nine to four. 
the Nationals are having some problems. Mon Ryan struck out 10 batters in the Tigers' 15-5 win over the Nationals. And they will in turn be playing tomorrow. Now the ride for charity is tomorrow 6 a.m. as the crows fly. The 6th Annual Pollo Tropical Ride for Charity is tomorrow, Saturday, May 16th, with a start and finish at Pollo Tropical on Ranfilly Circus. The Fast Track Management Team of Ravana Ferguson says it's a charity event and he's got something for everyone. The 11-year-old will leave from Pollo Tropical at 7.15 a.m., travel west on Sunrise Highway to the Ranfilly Circus roundabout, and then come around the East Sunrise Highway Junction at East Beach Drive, which is basically Mary Star, and they'll be back at Poyo Tropical. That's the 11 to 12 year old riders. The mother of the strollers will leave Poyo Tropical at 6.30 heading west on Sunrise Highway at Ramfrey Circle around the roundabout again and travel along the Sunrise Highway to the Lucayan Circle and also all routes will be started and ended will end at Poyo Tropical. The Ride for Charity will assist the Down Syndrome program on Grand Bahama and some top riders are ready. The professional riders will leave Poyo at 6 a.m. They, they will be the first set of active participants on the road as they will travel West Sunrise Highway to Branfrey Circles about the roundabout and then make their way on their long journey up to the missile base and a U-turn on Sunrise Way heading west back to Poyo. Well, another student at Sunland Baptist Academy, folks, has some reason to celebrate. You see, senior and center uh, Stingers basketball team Andrew Roker was actually presented with a letter of intent to attend Walton State University in Tennessee this fall semester. Head coach Jay Philippe making a presentation along uh, with his mother at an assembly they held on Wednesday. The 18-year-old was simply offered that full-time ride. Roker says it's an amazing feeling and he's been given an opportunity to actually thank his coaches for them training him. He's looking forward to the challenge of playing basketball at the next level. I never really been into basketball before, but then when I came to Sunline in grade nine, Miss Baston and one of her players started talking to me and introducing me to the game. And I went on a summer trip with them and I just fell in love with the game, basically. And they helped me by training me, training me. Marco, <laughs> Mr. Cooper, my coach, assistant coach. He really helped me because Almost if you play uh, tapes together, you will see the same moves because he's basically my mentor. He teach me, he teach me footwork, fundamentals, all the moves that I needed and I used today. Mr. Goob, I mean, Mr. Philippe is the best coach. <laughs> the kid's going to have a good time to land the next level. Well, let's stay in Sunland territory. Make no mistake about it, Brianne Bethel has a wealth of talent, folks, and she's on and off the track with this stuff. A taste of the big stage of the IAAF PTC World Relays is now reaping some awards for this young lady. The Stingers continuing their celebrations as they recognize 11th grade students and track sensation Brianne Bethel. While at the institution, Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Obi Wolshkam, encouraging Bethel to continue to stay focused on her gifts and to remain humble. He notes that he witnessed Bethel at the 2015 World Relays and said that when he saw her emotions after not winning her event, he knew that that experience was what she needed to propel her. Each one of you are gifted and talented. Every single individual in this place. And her talent will lift her to horizons beyond and she will cause dreams to come true. But in her defeat, I saw the humility. I saw a wonderful human being recognizing that I know that I'm carrying my country on my shoulders. And she knew that I today did not make it where I want to be. But if she didn't do that, think about it. Would she be as popular today? So what I saw in this young lady, and I'm gonna be watching her for the rest of my life, because I know one day she will stand on that Olympic stage, and the national anthem of the Bahamas will sing, and she will receive that gold medal. CEO of the institution, Godfrey Williams, says that it is amazing to watch God work through the students. He says the school is extremely proud of Bethel and she will be duly rewarded. We are now known around the world because of one Brian Bethel. 
And I'm telling you, she, she doesn't have to worry, and I have to point her out today, she doesn't have to worry about anything else, uh, paying any tuition or anything else, as long as she is at this school. Megan Shepard, ZNS, Total Sports. Way to go. And don't forget also the Bounce Basketball Federation men's national team practice 10 o'clock tomorrow, YMCA. Freeboard Rugby Club June Invitational Festival also starts tomorrow. Great weekend for sports. Way to go, Brianne. Got that full ride, girl. I'm out of here.